So, or good morning or good afternoon, everyone. So, welcome to join the module four of our Global Metaverse Bootcamp. So, today we will have speakers from Chain ID ecosystem. They will share topics about Metaverse, NFT, and GameFi. So, feel free to leave your questions in the chat area, and our guests will take some of them after their each session. Okay, so our first speaker today is Mr. Luis Miguel. He is a very experienced R&D engineer from Conflux Network. He will be talking about how to start a business in Metaverse. So let's welcome Mr. Luis. Hi, Kevin. I'm happy to be here um, with your audience. Uh, thank you for the invitation to participate and uh, present. Um, we will talk about the startup business in Metaverse. Okay, so um, we know right now uh, the term Metaverse is uh, in the hype. Uh, everybody is talking, talking about Metaverse. Um, th this come after the uh, Facebook announcement that they were changing the name to Meta, but uh, uh, the people who who are in the blockchain space knows that uh, we had uh, seen the evolution and the de development of uh, many good uh, projects related to the, to the metaverse and to the content economy. So um, my presentation today uh, is about some of these projects and some uh, recommendation about the business model that uh, developers and people interested in the metaverse can um, can use uh, to to open the conversation and to open the discussion about the metaverse. So, uh, please let me share my screen uh, to show the slide and to continue talking about this. Okay, here we are. So, start a business in metaverse. Uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Luis Garcia. Um, I'm a collaborator in Conflux Network. Uh, I have been in blockchain since 2017. And in this uh, four and almost five year, I have been uh, develop developing some platforms for uh, NFTs and other kind of um, of platform using uh, different uh, blockchains, but right now I'm focused uh, in in Conflux uh, network, trying to uh, help the developers community to have a better understanding of the blockchain development, but also in uh, the intersection with uh, business and projects that are coming to to the Conflux ecosystem. So what about the content economy? Okay, um, I think a lot of people uh, have seen or reading or watching something about the Board Ape Judge Club, um, this NFT collection of uh, 10,000 items with um, 6,000 6, and, and some of the owners. Um, this is uh, maybe one of the of the top of the top NFT collections uh, that have uh, getting the hype and that is uh, doing some interesting thing like in business and community uh, model uh, because um, they, they have this the minus slide but also because uh, they have involved some influencers and celebrities celebrities uh, let me follow uh, this uh, TV uh, presenter in the United States uh, who bought a Bird Ape Judge Club on November 8th for uh, $145,000. Um, we, we, we know how uh, these kind of NFT, NFTs can um, grow and how can uh, uh, be more expensive ha be while they are uh, being more um, more famous and more famous people is involved. Um, but I think of this project like 
more of the exception, part of that, those uh, projects in the top that are um, really, really expensive, that are involving uh, celebrities. But I think uh, this is not the only um, model we can have for projects like this, but it is a cool one uh, because they, they have a community and they uh, have done some interesting um, events and they are uh, giving some utilities for members like uh, to keep owner interested. And they have built this bird ape kennel club, um, a mutton ape judge uh, judge club and also they they um, organize a party now that um, in the last month uh, we presented in NFT NYC and they organized a, a party just for uh, talking holders so that's part of the membership benefits and is um, a cool cool um, participation and cool organization around these uh, these tokens so um, it is an interesting project uh, because they are uh, granting buyers and only made right to make commercial use cases and derivative works from the underlying board eight characters um, as you know when you buy an nft um, you think and, and and you ask, what can you do with that NFT? Okay, so uh, the body apes are very clear in that, um, in what you can do with your NFT. So what else about body apes just, uh, just club? Well, um, in in 2021, uh, they launched the, the 10,000 apes and the price was just, 200 USD, okay? In, in that time, um, point, uh, 0.088 Ethereum um, were 200 USD. So um, we're talking uh, some months, eight months until now, uh, but that was the cost. And now uh, the cost uh, right now is like uh, 39, 39 Ethereum. So, and that is uh, growing value, uh, like rocketed uh, growing value. So um, they are in the fourth place in in the sales ranking. Uh, they have eight thousand forty five uh, buyers. You know, um, like they are now uh, very famous. Uh, people is constantly uh, reselling. So. Uh, this is more the number of time it has been a uh, reseller because number of owners until um, the day we uh, drafted the presentation was uh, 5,925. So it's uh, very famous and it's, it's cool and it has some um, evolution okay, of, uh, of the apes like Mountain Ape Judge Club and they have also 10,000 um, new mutant apes and the price, uh, we can see the difference between the price now that they uh, launched this, uh, this new collection. Okay, so, uh, but both of these collections are uh, being uh, seller, sell and sell uh constantly okay so they have a, a good community a uh, very interesting community to um get an ape okay bird ape or mutant ape so that's why the secondary market um have uh see this number okay like 100 bird ape in the sort of these auctions sold for um 24 Point four million. Okay, so uh, they they are uh, organizing uh, cool things, and this is part of the um, creators' economy. Okay, the, the one of the business models that uh, uh, people or organization that comes into NFTs can 
um, arranged, kind of organized. Um, the key here is to have a very uh, connected community and a, a very interesting uh, collection, okay? But uh, of course, it, it is not easy to have this kind of uh, collections, but uh, if you, you follow some of the uh, recommendations about how to launch uh, this collection, how, how to uh, get people involved, how to uh, get influencers, um, and famous people involved, of course, you can uh, get something like this. Okay. It is uh, pretty interesting. I think what, uh, what will happen in the future, okay? Because um, they, they have um, kind of other projects uh, like some house in, in Miami and some other, um, some other uh, venues or locations where uh, you can uh, do something if you are the owner of uh, Bored Aid. Okay, so really interesting. Um, okay, now let's talk about uh, the metaverse and the central land. Okay, uh, this uh, project is more like a, a metaverse uh, because it was designed to be this uh, immersive um, experience, to have this immer immersive experience and they uh, did an ITO for uh, their token MANA that is an ERC-20. And, and right now is one of the uh, metaverse token that uh, have seen um, uh, a very high uh, price in the last weeks, okay? After the, the announcement by Facebook. So what is interesting about MANA? Well, um, they sell land with this uh, this uh, concept of uh, land selling. Um, it is not uh, the, the only project uh, selling land, and it is not uh, like uh, mm -hmm. the first one doing this uh, selling land. Uh, but they are uh, completely a crypto a crypto project. Okay, so the land they sell are uh, NFTs are ERC, and they also um, allowed the, the content creators to sell um, tokens like ERC 1155. Uh, okay, so this this is um, a cool project, and some uh, companies in the real world are, are trying to uh, build. Uh, something in in the central land. Okay, the the most uh, building um, that I have seen are art art galleries, and that's cool. But I think the project have a, a very good proposition. Okay, and it is a very interesting to uh, companies in the in the real world. Okay, like to to go to Mana and and build something. So uh, the distribution and, and the fractionary mechanism of this ICO was uh, forty percent of the token were distributed in the ICO, and they are using the twenty percent for community incentives. Uh, with this bullet, we see they have a clear a clear um, token token management and they, they have uh, done a good um, definition of their tokenomics. I think that is part of the of the success for a project in the in the metaverse, but also uh, I think to have a good uh, economic uh, definition, a good uh, economic design, for projects in the metaverse uh, helps to the evolution of the project, okay? To have a good um, token mechanism to get the um, community involved and get rewarded uh, about what are they uh, doing like for uh, content creators. 
um, it is important for projects in metaverse to think about a good um, token design okay, to do uh, tokenomics in 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 a very uh, well way okay so uh, th th this is interesting so let, let me talk a little more about the central land um their token mana and the, they have a, a DAO, the centralized autonomous organization and they do uh, liquidity mining okay by using this uh, balance pool. Uh, you can buy land in central land uh, of course they have a secondary uh, market this is uh, also this is very uh, important for projects in in the metaverse okay to enable a secondary market uh, because usually in in crypto uh, the people is buying uh, not just land but uh, token and items with some rarity and trying to uh, use that like an investment so if a project wants to attract um, investors not just content creators but investors in in the token um uh, the token sector they uh, need to enable a secondary market okay sometimes this is like uh to have speculators but uh, i think that is part of the of the crypto universe like uh, like to have this secondary market um of course, the, the uh, development value here is for uh, multiple commercial terms. And as I said, uh, this project is interesting to allow companies in the real world to uh, have uh, this involvement in, in a crypto metaverse. And I think crypto metaverse are... Um, a kind of uh, uh, a special kind of uh, metaverses, but also I think they allow the content creators um, to have be better ownership of the items they are creating. Okay, uh, because this is connected to a blockchain. Okay, if you if you buy uh, something in in a crypto metaverse, you are the only owner and nobody in the uh, maybe in the team of the project or anyone else can uh, can can take that for you uh, nobody can just um, steal the, the token or something like that so uh, that is uh, very important for content creators to have uh, the ability to um, sell or resell the items they are building or they are uh, buying okay so uh, the central land allows the creator sales but as i said um this is these are um through nfts okay uh that are uh, that are registered in a blockchain okay and they are allowing uh, some uh games to evolve inside the metaverse like casino games okay so they they have a casino here okay so let's let's continue talking about platforms now i'm going to talk about trading platforms like OpenSea. okay what is open OpenSea is kind of an amazon of nft is the um marketplace where all the artists want to be of course um gas prices uh, for minting had been kind of a stopper for some for some artists in some regions and that uh, have opened the door to other marketplaces to uh, offer their, their services and, and listing and minting for for artists so but OpenSea is like um, the most famous uh, marketplace maybe um, together with uh, Rarible okay 
they are, they are uh, the top uh, NFT marketplaces, but uh, OpenSea have, oh, is, a, is a bridge for creators, platforms, and crypto investors. And what is cool is that uh, you can mint and create your collection, and you can uh, decide when you when you uh, want to put your collection in in sale. Okay, when you want to open uh, your NFTs for for sale, so the the users can buy, sell, auction, and even make NFTs for free. Uh, with gas and it is the largest trading platform. Um, they have low rate uh, commission. They have a uh, ecosystem with over 3.4 billion transactions in August. Um, I think um, there are a lot of space or, or room for new marketplaces uh, to offer uh, new services because um, right now, OpenSea doesn't offer uh, like the um, NFT uh, partition um, the, to, to allow a new user or an artist to create a community and sell part of the of the NFT to different um, to different collectors or user. Okay, so. We, we are um, watching how new marketplaces are evolving in, in other chains with very interesting uh, proposition. We have uh, some uh, marketplaces in Conflux that uh, right now are uh, launching new, new um... oh, sorry, just, just a moment. Yes, um, yeah, they, they are uh, launching new collections uh, from uh, very interesting artists in uh, any part of the world, okay, so in any region. So it is interesting how marketplaces are evolving. I think for uh, NFT marketplaces, um, it is important to give some added value to artists, okay, not just moving uh, from the high transaction cost, but uh, creating value for artists, okay? And there are new propositions for artists, like to help them creating um, like bored apes and allow them to manage, um, to manage the, their uh, communities, okay? So th th this is interesting because um, in the content creator economy, um, artists can now have more options. So the, the, market, the market is just growing. We are not at the end of the market. We are uh, at the beginning. So this uh, business model for um, NFT marketplaces is really interesting. So let's, let's talk about other uh, projects in the game ecosystem that is sandbox uh, I, I really love this this project also um, one of my daughters is starting to use the sandbox uh, she is eight years old and when she know about this project um, she was impressed and um, tell me hey that I want I want to uh, build something and use the, the sandbox ecosystem so right now um, we are trying to build something in in sandbox uh, but why I'm uh, interested in sandbox well because this is um, the sandbox is a metaverse that allows um, that allow users and content creators to uh, define uh, games or um, constructions about play to earn okay play to earn um, they uh, provide creators with true ownership of their creation has not fungible tokens nfts and reward them for participation in the ecosystem um, but uh, why uh, the sandbox has been uh, like getting um, getting getting hype and be more um, famous and successful 
it is because they have attracted some uh, big names to to the metaverse like Atari, like Snoop Dogg, that uh, right now they have uh, lands in in sandbox and they are um, they are showing there. Okay, and the the project by itself, well, it has uh, ERC twenty token and they have uh, lands uh, in the forum NFTs, ERC-721. They also utilize the ERC-1155 standard for assets. So I, I think this part is uh, uh, really good because if you don't like to build complete games, but you like to build some uh, assets or, or pieces, of architecture, you can uh, build and sell in in sandbox. So that that is uh, really cool, really interesting. And um, what else about uh, the sandbox? Well, they had an initial seed round with a total of four um, and twenty one million USD. Uh, but also the pro the the team related to the project. Uh, had been related to to games um, very, very long uh, before they joined into the sandbox, before they created the sandbox. I think that is part of the um, the, the characteristic or the features of a very good project to have um, in the team to have people that had been in the in the space. Um, before they they launched the team okay because as you know in the 2017 a lot of projects uh, were launched like ICOs and maybe 90 percent of those projects have been uh, disappeared okay so uh, the sandbox is a really good one um they are growing they they have launched the uh, alpha pass that had uh, had to get a lot of attention from uh, the people in the ecosystem because it is a limiting edition pass and they allow you to have uh, some benefits if you have uh, buy land before the, the launch of the alpha pass. Okay, so what else about the sandbox ecosystem? Well, it is a user-generated content ecosystem. Um, this is very important. Um, thing to, to have in uh, Metaverse uh, to allow the users to generate the ecosystem by themselves and to allow they to, to sell in a marketplace or to build uh, games. Um, they have these uh, voxel editors that is the, the tool to, um, to create, to create uh, and model NFTs in this uh, in this ecosystem in this metaverse. So, when it comes to to types of metaverse, I think the metaverse that allow user generated content um, will be like uh, the rule uh, because this creates a lot of communities inside the metaverse and it allows to um, the creators to sell their um, constructions, to sell um, the, the creations, okay? So that's why they have a marketplace where users can low publish and sell their NFTs creations. And they have uh, delivered the tools and the progress in a very good um professional way. So that's why the, the project right now is, uh, the token is like seven, seven dollars by uh, the sun. I don't remember the exact name, but it was like uh, 50, 60 cents starting this year. So that, that talks about the growing of this project. Um, well, but what, what um, let me talk a little, a little about uh, the Conflux Grants program, program because uh, we want to allow developers and creators um, 
create amazing ideas and we uh, want to fund those amazing ideas. We have these grant programs uh, to build using um, Conflux blockchain and we want to open the conversation with uh, developers and creators to help them to build using Conflux, okay? Until now, Conflux has allocated 2.4 billion CFX. That is around um, 720 uh, million USD to support amazing ideas. And uh, we are offering up to $100,000 uh, $100, uh, for, for projects. Okay, so um, this is interesting about our grant program. We also uh, have other uh, kind of programs like the um, artist residency program. Um, this is for artists that uh, mean NFTs or game items or uh, do, um, yeah, they, they do art um, or gaming art. So you can go to our forum and review our grant proposals. And also uh, we have these categories, okay, for infrastructure, uh, community, the, uh, the Conflux community has grown um, this year. Now we have uh, active communities in, in Russia, in France, in Italy, and Latin America, the global community, and of course, the funding community that is in Asia, okay, in China. So you, you can apply uh, to the to the grant, uh, consider these tires if uh, you are a developer or content creator. Okay, so we are uh, just in time and this is my last slide. So um, maybe, if, uh, I don't know if there are any questions about my slides about uh, Conflux, or uh, we want any recommendation to uh, about um, the 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 business model in the metaverse and blockchain. So we are open to answer this question. We want to hear about you. Um, we have uh, Telegram groups and we are on Discord. So you you even can send me an email. Uh, but I, I'd recommend to join this court and ask all your, your uh, question there. But if right now uh, there is a question, I can answer now. Uh, great, thanks, Luis. Um, I have a question for you because um, I, I also am also a, a Metaverse project uh, lover or fans. So, um, I would like to know if how we can like find the find the project is a, a good or a fantastic project in metaverse like how could you like give us some recommendations or give us some suggestions when we are looking for the metaverse project. Yes, yes, of course, it it, uh, it always depends on uh, what you'd like to do right it, the recommendation is like uh, if you want to to build something around around nfts maybe you can build an nft marketplace or you can uh mean if you're an artist you can mean a collection a create a community about you uh, around your collection um right now we are like uh trying to define segments around the, the kind of projects we can um help and build and for Metaverse, we have uh, the kind of project that I have shown in my slide, but we are always open to help you to define uh, your idea and help uh, the, the creators of developers to, to uh, give a structure to their project. Okay? Uh, that is something that I love to do, but also, uh, we have uh, people in our teams uh, that can uh, help with that. And 
um, also um, new galleries in the NFT NFT space are launching like kind of uh, immersive experience. Okay, that that is like an evolution for NFT marketplaces, and I have seen some some uh, NFT marketplaces that now create the uh, the gallery in. Uh, in in Mana or the Central Land, uh, sorry, in the Central Land, or crypto voxels or any other um, metaverse, but uh, they are trying to give uh, the tools to to the artists, but also in in the uh, DeFi uh, DeFi and uh, metaverse. Uh, right now, there are just uh, few projects so maybe uh, the people can start thinking about how to uh, connect both concepts also not just with uh, play to earn uh, the play to earn concept that I see more related to uh, the game development but um, also in the in the the DeFi okay so kind of uh, lending projects or liquidity pools maybe in uh, connected to metaverse uh, but also for gaming because um, gaming in crypto is a growing fast growing uh, industry so uh, developers and content creators can start um, thinking about um, these kind of projects and the kind of uh, business model they, they can um, build in this um, gaming ecosystem in the metaverse. Okay, so I, I think uh, for next generations um, will be like the, the regular use for them, okay? Because uh, new generations are, or have been using other metaverse like uh, Roblox and they are being uh, more, related to uh, this kind of of gaming and this kind of virtual interactions so i i, I think there are a lot of opportunities okay so uh, if you want to um launch or if you want help defining something you can join the community and ask for uh for help uh, because we are open open to offer that help okay all right thanks um if i think if you uh if you are interested in conflux then you can find conflux team to uh, to see if you can start a metaverse project okay um yeah. well, thanks again for today's sharing Luis. thank you for um, the invitation <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, due to the time limitation, we have to invite the next speaker. Uh, thanks again for your sharing. Um, we have our second speaker today. He is Mr. Severus Chi. He is the lead of China partnership at Flow Blockchain. So he will give us a topic about why Flow is the best blockchain for the NFT platforms. Hey, hello everyone. This is Severus from Flow China team. It's a pleasure to be here and I'm excited to share this presentation with you. Uh, a brief introduction about me. Uh, I started to do blockchain research in 2017 and joined Hushkey Capital in 2018 for three years and formally joined the Flow team this year. Currently, I'm in charge of the China partnership of Flow. So today I will talk about uh, why Flow is the best blockchain for NFT platforms. Before we talk about Flow, let's see why we need NFT first. As we all know, NFT is a data structure based on blockchain. So blockchain is the sourcing of everything. I saw that blockchain allows user value to realize paradigm shift because uh, with blockchain, the user changes from a single rule of a consumer to richers. So we have consumer, creator, and collectors of NFTs in this network. 
from the demand side, supply side, and network effect. So why the user become a member of the ecological builder? Because uh, personal creation will be more widely disseminated, inspired, and recognized. Because the blockchain is a global network, there is no middleman. And group collaborations can be carried out in a fairer and more social environment. And the creation result can be permanently stored, forming a long tail network effect. And we all talk about Web3. What is Web3? Actually, I saw that the realization of Web3 is inseparable from NFT. Why? So, so, so the first is why Web3 is important. Web3 system offer a better version uh, for how such societies should use technology. Uh, open, distribute technology platforms that are directly accountable to their users provide an alternative to a digital status. And decentralized is the organizing principle of our past and the future success. Um, it can help us succeed in the face uh, of new challenges today. Uh, decentralization fosters uh, a, a democratized uh, technology platform that embody, uh, in, uh, embody the values of open society and will provide the infrastructure to power tomorrow's econ economy and instructions. So about NFT. NFT, we know, is non-fungible token. So non-fungible means uh, irreplaceable. Most important information and items in our lives actually are uh, irreplaceable. So in the future, in the Web3 network, this contents can be presented as NFT, like uh, collections, like art, music, and culture industry, and personal assets, uh, like financial products or game props, and also uh, personality traits, like avatar, uh, for example, the CryptoPunk, uh, and also personal information, like the, the DID or domain names, and tickets, uh, like the gallery tickets, uh, match tickets. Uh, this is a very good way to uh, make some link uh, with the offline rights, and of course, the copyrights, and, and et cetera. Uh, so with all this, uh, what else can we achieve through NFT? We can carry richer content, uh, not just uh, the things I uh, told before. And the FT itself is a natural community. Uh, it has a long tail effect. And you can meet the needs of crypto native for consumptions and the cultural identity. And also you can meet the demands for change of the cultural and entertainment industries. And also it's very important for digital identity and digital credit system construction. I will not uh, talk too much about blockchain Web3 or NFT here. Uh, and uh, if you have any thoughts or questions, you can reach out to me uh, with my email. So next part is uh, more important is uh, why Flow is the best blockchain uh, for NFT platforms. Uh, now we know that NFT is very important. So let's see why Flow is also very important. Um, let me give you an introduction about Flow first. Uh, sorry, here, yeah. So Flow, Flow blockchain uh, made by Dapper Labs uh, is the blockchain for consumer scale ap applications and has proved to be the world's fittest growing blockchain. Many big brands and IPs have partnered with Step Labs and Flow to create a brand new digital experience for their billions of funds. Um, Step Labs is a consumer blockchain company, and what we care about is to create a future with consumer grade decentralized applications. And we are the creators of CryptoKitties, NB Topshot, Dapper Wallet, and Flow, of course. So about CryptoKitties, it is uh, the uh, number one popular blockchain collectible game in history. It also introduced a framework for NFT, as ERC721. 
uh, that is still the golden star for FTs today. And about NBA Top Shot and the Dapper Wallet, uh, we are also the creator of the NBA Top Shot. NBA Top Shot is uh, the, I saw it's a best example of how big brands uh, embrace a decentralized world. And it is the most rapidly growing market of digital collectible of data. And the top shot allows fans to, uh, for the first time, own the highlights of their favorite NBA teams and players and the greatest moments in the NBA history. And Dapper Wallet is uh, instrumental to NBA Top Shot's success by providing a seamless experience uh, during uh, user onboarding and offers a simple credit card payment. Uh, so that users could engage with NBA Top Shot without needing any knowledge of how transactions work or any worries about uh, where or how their NFTs are stored. Uh, Dapper Wallet aims to um, also aims to provide the same seamless uh, experience to as many flow ecosystem partners as possible. So, which uh, would create a shared experience for all flow ecosystem platforms in the future. So what makes Flow great? I will talk about uh, this uh, with three parts. is functional, economic, and technical. So the first is functional. Uh, functional uh, accessibility, uh, also referred to as usability, describes the ability of a blockchain and its ecosystem to provide an easy onboarding and user experience such that user uh, interactions with the protocol or applications can be carried out in a simple and efficient, uh, efficient manner. Uh, first part on, uh, for onboard uh, and wallet. Uh, every user's journey uh, begins with a process of on onboarding. Uh, the first phase of user interactions, including the setting up and uh, funding uh, of the accounts, uh, up until the first network transactions. And this phase should be as frictionless as possible, needing only a limited number of steps and ideally no technical expertise. Um, for maximum uh, accessibility, wallet should not only be easy to use, but also widely accepted across all kinds of, of, uh, of, of applications in the product's uh, ecosystem. If users uh, need to set up multiple wallets from multiple providers to assess different applications, the level of accessibility greatly decreases. So on Flow, you can sign in with social accounts in Dapper Wallet and Blockto, like your Google accounts or your email address. And Flow uh, support multi-signature at the code level. Users can authorize the platform to manage assets and it's a secure yet convenient way. And the Wallet API is a major and open source server-side hosting solution developed uh, based on flow features, uh, eliminating, uh, eliminating the need for local clients' wallet development. And yeah, the second part, second part is uh, Sorry, the second part is about the fiat payment on off uh, ramp. So while uh, some, uh, some, some percentage of users will transact within the, the crypto ecosystem, nearly ex uh, exclusive, but mass adoption will recur that non-crypto natives are able to easily transfer crypto earning to more fam familiar currencies. So while uh, external exchanges can certainly be used for this purpose, uh, dedicated integration serves ensure that a user does not have to leave the given uh, application for the payment on RAM, which greatly increase uh, overall accessibility. So on Flow, we have cooperated with payment companies, including Wire, OnePay, and Rack Network. Almost all over the world, users can use fiat 
to directly participate uh, in the flow ecosystem products ways uh, like credit card, debit card, Apple Pay, and et cetera. Yeah, so so for, uh, for the second part is econo uh, economic. Uh, first, about transaction fees. Uh, because gas fee uh, fluctuates quickly. So pre uh, pricing the transaction phase right is a non-trivial process. While the recent uh, adoption EIP 1559 on Ethereum, uh, pricing uh, me mechanism and some user-friendly wallet may calculate event, uh, some of the, those problems. Uh, but uh, high transaction fees with complex mechanism and still can hide the general accessibility of the product. So on flow, the gas fee is extremely low. It's just uh, 0 0.401 uh, flow per transaction. And the code level supports the third party to pay the gas fee. So that mainstream users do not need to understand and wear the gas fee and enter the blockchain world without any barriers. And next is about uh, application layer products. Um, FT should not only focus on uh, scarcity and high value. Uh, high floor uh, prices create an ecosystem that is uh, just uh, only accessible to uh, an economic edit. Uh, flows products pay more attention to the consumer grade and uh, accessible of users. And next uh, is about running nodes. Um, adopting the world's only multi-type uh, node architecture, uh, the rules of each node with different functions are separated. And the business on the chain is excluded in a pipeline manner thus ensure high uh, efficiency and making the expansion very flexible, which can cope with high con uh, current transactions, concurrent transactions, yeah. Uh, yeah, the last part is about the technical. Um, yeah, consider uh, what uh, abstraction a language offers for its developers, just like the underlying protocol, a language should abstract away as much complexity from the developers uh, as, as possible without uh, sacrificing on security or customizability. For example, uh, the Cadence uh, is the uh, development language of Flow. Uh, Cadence automatically imposes rules on the handling uh, of digital value using the novel data model of resources. Well, uh, Solidity demands uh, manual uh, implement, uh, implementation of those low level checks. Um, also we support compatibility is the ability for people to build on top uh, on each other contract, which we think is also one of the superpowers of blockchain. And then make sure that uh, through education materials, uh, documentation and uh, a reference uh, implementation for all of this uh, aspect exists and uh, that they are easily accessible. Uh, like uh, FCL, uh, Flow Client Library, enable applications to easily integrate with all FCL compatible wallet and other service. This offers developers a strong a strong foundation to compose their apps uh, with existing uh, building blocks and emulating uh, emulator exposes a gRPC server, a server that implements the Flow SS uh, API, which is designed to have near feature parity with a real network API. Also, you can check uh, all this and more tools and uh, documents from uh, Duckdown on flow.org and play on flow.org and crypto.com. Yeah. So, in the last, uh, please allow me to talk about what we can offer and our future in Metaverse. So, first is uh, we provide a full spot uh, for the developers. We provide consultation uh, on products and operations 
and we give guidance on technology, uh, both from China and global. And we support for market resource to assist the user in turning back. And we cooperation with ecosystem products and uh, top IPs. So if you would like to make more cooperations with our ecosystem, the best choice is to join us. And also from the uh, money side, we give grants and strategy investment. Uh, so I, I can give you an example. Uh, the host of uh, this switch, uh, White Matrix, actually debuted a 3D sandbox game named Matrix World on Flow and uh, received hundreds of millions of dollars in purchase application. Flow is the main overseas partner. And yeah, and the second part is about education. Uh, Flow Ecology has more than uh, 700 products uh, covering sports, games, art, music, technology, uh, fashion, and many other fields. So we can provide a case study to reduce the cost and barrier for developers. So last is about flowing metaverse, because we talk about metaverse today, yeah. Uh, I saw that the previous number showed that Flow has uh, managed to leverage the readings of NB Top Shot to, to top uh, into the cycle of com compounding network effects. And the flagship centered nascent phase has made room for a vibrant non custody ecosystem um, that provides infrastructures for thousands of, of applications to come. So in this first cycle, Flow has matured into a scalable and accessible platform that's ready for everyone to build consumer scale blockchain experiences. So this uh, developments have not gone on and noticed by some of the uh, biggest brands in the world, like, like I, I write here, the NFL, UFC, uh, La Liga, Genies, Dr. Sis, Turner, and many more are uh, all ready to launch their own blockchain enabled uh, experiences on Flow. So kicking off the next cycle of uh, compounding network effects that already has much more weight from the start, leveraging the power of this next wave, Flow sets out to bring blockchain to business and making the tech technology accessible to a mass audience and putting a blockchain wallet into every pocket. So thank you and that's all. Uh, if you have any questions or thoughts, please feel free to contact me. Uh, this is my email and thanks again. Goodbye. All right, thanks for several sharing. So our chain ID has now built an ecosystem to fund risks. So you have idea or you have already started a project. Um, if you want to share and you can find the teams from our partnerships, for example, Conflux, uh, Hacko, um, Flow, Polygon, and also you can DM me on uh, chain ID or official Twitter, okay? So next we have our uh, last guest as well. Her name is Anya Cooper. She is the Overseas Marketing Director at Hackle. She will share her research on the area of game five. Okay, so let's welcome. Hi everyone, my name is Anna and I'm Operating Marketing Director at Hackle. So right now uh, I would like to talk to you about GameFi and its present and its future and uh, how does HECA support it. So um, now I will share my screen and share my thoughts about it. Uh, so, um, Firstly, um, it's well known that Ethereum 2.0 launched at the end of last year and it brought a huge impact on the whole industry, but users and developers are still 
assailed by uh, outrageous gas fee and congested um, network of Ethereum before it moves to PLS, absolutely. Um, you can observe how high the gas fee has been on Ethereum after DeFi summer of last year from this PowerPoint picture, uh, which is quite obvious, right? So look at the next uh, slide. The smart contracts market share of Ethereum is being attacked by offer chains because of the low performance and the high gas. The market share has been declining from March of this year. So why does this happen? In my opinion, the root cause is the scalability issue of Ethereum. So can decentralization, safety, and scalability, the famous impossible trinity, be achieved at the same time? Many Ethereum killers have made attempts. You can see from uh, next slide. There are many kinds of layer one and layer two solutions, and they can be split into many other specific resolutions, such as bigger blocks, shed ring, sidechain, DAG, etc. So layer two resolutions are considered the most promising amount of them. Yeah, thus we should uh, re-exam the scalability solutions from public chain themselves. That is to say, we should resolve the problem from layer one. Heckle is just doing this thing in order to ensure that unique constraints and semantics of blockchain are not destroyed in advance. We draw on and use the nature and excellent engineering optimization experience of software and internet. In advance of the chain structure, we modulate the architecture, fully split and decouple the components. We carried out localization, multi-level cache optimization on the premise of transparency and security. Thus, Hecos current TFC can, up, can reach up to 1500 TFC per second without any layer two solution. Um, yeah, so then I'll introduce the latest developments about Heco, and I hope you guys can know more about us. So what Heco is, um, basically we are an EVM compatible public chain that provides blockchain developers with an efficient and low cost on chain environment for decentralized application smart contracts and digital assets. HT token is the native token of HECO blockchain network and the consensus mechanism of the HECO is HPOs. So uh, HECO's mainnet was uh, online last year, December 21st. Uh, up to the end of the October, hundreds of blockchain projects, including DEXs, Oracle, Synthetic Assets, GameFi, and NFT have been running on Heco. You can learn more about these projects uh, by looking at this picture to know more about our ecosystem. So uh, you may wonder what Heco strategic positioning is. As the technology base and infrastructure of the entire DeFi ecology, Heco is carrying all of the core business of assets applications and traffic entrance. There are four technology matrices, their entrances layer, uh, application layer, base layer, and underlying technology respectively. And the underlying technology can be divided into 12 core modules. You can know more about from this slide. So right now, let me share some, some of our data. So up to the end of October, the main net of HECO has operated approximately over like, well, for now we're, we're, we've been operating for almost one year, right? So the TVL already, um, already above of 6 billion USDT, dollar, USDT with the total transaction exceeded Five, uh, I, I mean, half a billion. Uh, so the highest TPS is up to 1500 uh, per second, as I was saying before. But what are the highlights of HECON? I think that uh, one of the most important part is the high performance. So at technical level, HECO has a high performance. 
um, we can safely set the block gas limit above 100 kWa. So um, we have elaborated why HECO could achieve so high TPS above and won't go further to talk about it here. So secondly, um, of course, this is the high asset safety. The network security of the public chain is also an issue worthy of attention. In fact, for the security of public chain, developers and network uh, security workers have made considerable efforts by hackers and um, they're still emerging in endlessly. So this year in the first half of it, uh, chain assets loss because of the security incidents is like 5.1% of Binance Smart Chain assets loss on the same period. So um, what is important is that HECO is the only chain was not successfully attacked by anyone. Thirdly, um, the low cost. So HECO has approved method transaction which could greatly reduce the on-chain transaction fee of users. The method transaction scheme can also effectively reduce the migration cost of DAP developers, thus um, greatly reducing the cost of users using DAP. Accordingly to estimation, the gas fee for normal transfer of uh, or transaction on HECO chain is only like 2.5 QA, which is like 0.02 USDT dollars. Um, of course, another important part uh, of HECO is how we support our developers. So HECO is very keen to support developers, especially for game five projects, because HECO's vision is to support developers at every stage of their growth. In the end of July of this year, we launched a joint game and accelerator program for game five developers. We established a new partnership with Animoca Brands, Gumi Crypto Capital, Coin98, Wallet, and many others um, to equip emerging game developers with the tools and resources they need to create and market their decentralized games. Um, in August, in the middle of August, HECO announced the initiation of 1 million developers environment program. So uh, the initiative will encourage talent developers to develop and promote applications on the HECO chain. This includes GameFi, NFTs, DAX, aggregator projects, infrastructures, etc. Shortly after that, after that uh, we held a global ha gaming hackathon. This hackathon was the first gaming thing blockchain hackathon from the platform to provide evaluation, guidance, and support services for. Uh, participants. During the event, developers and projects could also participate in workshops and demo days to connect with potential VC investors. Apart from the strongly support for GameFi developers, we also designed various activities with the um, theme of NFT and DeFi for HECO users. One of them are um, our lucky HECO. But for the developers, we are holding our demo days all around the globe, which is extremely popular. Uh, the last one was in Dubai. Maybe some of you were there. Also, um, we have this Hacker Master Builders. Um, so what is it, you might wonder? Hacker Chain. Um, so to better support innovators and contributors in the Hacker system, uh, we officially launched our master builder program on like 2nd of December, something like that. So the objective of the program is to link Demo Day, Grand Hackathon and other series of developers to support programs to the high quality projects in innovative DeFi, GameFi, Metaverse, Web3, Null, uh, Zero, initial assets offering platform and infrastructure and data services uh, to facilitate their growth and prosperity. 
Uh, yeah, so uh, we are looking forward to building a new era of innovating together with the master builders. Um, let me tell you how to join. If the project has been running for some time and has achieved good results, uh, then we will invite the project team to participate in the election of master builders as long as the team completes its deployment in HECO before the like before 27th of December and passes the security audit. So I will share the link later uh, so that you can submit the form. After that, the elected projects can be awarded the qualification of listing tokens on Hobby Glo Global or the investment incubation opportunities offered by HECO Fund. Yeah, so that's pretty much like it. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Here you will find some of our social media links to better understand what HECO is. Um, Thank you. And I think um, I'm done here. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye bye. That was a pleasure to talk to you. Bye bye. So if you have questions, please leave that in the chatting area. We have a few more minutes here. Okay, so if uh, today's session is all about like uh, capital, uh, capital ecosystem. So basically, if you want to start a project, then we have some um, good partnerships and we can support you and lead you to start and quickly start on on the project yes so i think if we don't have more questions then we our our ecosystem roundtable today is going to be ended okay mm -hmm. thanks for joining our module today yes i'll see you soon in tomorrow's uh, module. Bye-bye.